What was the experience like for you, making the decision to come, going through the process? What was that like for you? Definitely, like, fi finances always come into play, right? So it was, okay, well, there's this financial commitment. However, based on my knowledge of you and testimonials that I heard, I thought, oh, well, this is an easy financial commitment because I was going to doctors and chiropractic and acupuncture all the time, plus living in pain and fear and emotional trauma that obviously going to you a couple times with a one-time commitment was a lot cheaper. Was much cheaper, <laughs> much cheaper than and probably more on pleasant. repeat. Yes, on repeat going to all of these other people, which I was getting temporary relief, um, and sometimes longer term, you know, three months, six months, but not a permanent relief. Nice. So then, you know, after committing to that, it was an obvious, like, all right, I'm not going to book these acupuncture and chiropractic appointments and my doctor's appointments, I'm just gonna commit to this, do that, focus in, and see how it goes. And it, Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am sitting here with Julie, and uh, Julie uh, came to me, her husband actually called me and said uh, you were struggling with some kind of PTSD-like issues. Do you want to tell our listeners what that was like and what you were feeling and what kind of yeah. relief you were looking for? Yes, so at the time, I was having PTSD issues from a dog attack. And I attributed all my fears to just that. And thankfully, because of Dr. Tara, it was much bigger than that. I was just living in fear of like other teeth going bad, having more surgeries, living in fear what day I would wake up in pain. I got an esophagus disease, which I think it all kind of went hand in hand where I would choke on different foods, um, so it's called the eosinophilic esophagitis. You know, pretty much from here up, TMJ pain, headaches, neck pain, all kind of correlated to the dog attack is what I attributed all the pain to. So it's pretty hard to heal when we're in fight or flight, when mm -hmm. the brain is getting the message that we have to run for our lives or fight somebody or hide or freeze. Mm -hmm. So what was the experience like for you, making the decision to come, going through the process? Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Definitely like fi finances always come into play, right? So it was, okay, well there's this financial commitment. However, based on my knowledge of you and testimonials that I heard, I thought, oh, well this is an easy financial commitment because I was going to doctors and chiropractic and acupuncture all the time, plus living in pain and fear and emotional trauma that obviously going to you a couple of times with a one-time commitment was a lot cheaper. Was much cheaper, <laughs> much cheaper than and probably more on pleasant. repeat. <laughs> yes, on repeat going to all of these other people, which I was getting temporary relief. Um, and sometimes longer term, you know, three months, six months, but not a permanent relief. Nice. So then, you know, after committing to that, it was an obvious like, all right, I'm not going to book these acupuncture and chiropractic appointments and my doctor's appointments. I'm just going to commit to this, do that, focus in and see how it goes. And it obviously worked. <laughs> <laughs> So from a, like an emotional, I mean, obviously from scheduling and financial, that obviously was a big win. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like emotionally to transition from just being in fear, being in pain a lot? What mm -hmm. was that like for you? I mean, honestly, every day I would wake up and think, oh, is my tooth hurting today? Am I going to lose that one? Or, oh, every bite of food I took, am I going to choke this time? Are my kids going to see me choke? Then coming here and it was absolute immediate. I just felt like I was like an angel flying through the air, Aww. like so light. <laughs> and um, it's never changed since. And this was nearly a year ago Yeah, it was now. a long time ago. Yeah. And I haven't ever 
I've never once choked. I've never once thought about like, oh my gosh, do you have enough water to swallow food down? How many weeks had you gone? Cause I remember that and that was very concerning cause mm -hmm. it's like, that's potentially life threatening. Mm -hmm. So how many weeks had you been concerned? I think you had been to the ER a time mm -hmm. or two. So yeah, I think it was a good three year period of not regular choking, but anytime I ate like carrots, meats, oftentimes I'd get up from the dinner table and wait by the kitchen sink to either have it pass and come up or try to swallow it down with water. Um, but probably went to the ER like three times to get the impacted food taken out. But the whole time you're choking and you can't talk and you can't swallow and you can't spit up and you can't vomit. It's just stuck. So it's a very vulnerable position to be in because you you feel like you're gonna die because when you're choking, you assume that's the only end result. So going to the hospital happened three times, but it happened regularly, especially events like my husband's work events or weddings. Oftentimes there's meat and I would vomit up food at the table because I'd be choking on it in front of all these people I don't know. So there was a lot of social um, anxiety, social embarrassment, social settings around food and eating, which we all, as a culture, that's that's part of socialization is food and eating. That's it, right? So it, it's more like an isolated feeling like, oh, I don't want to eat And that people. had gone on for three years. At least, yeah. Wow. So before that, it would probably just feel more like constriction and a pill caught in my throat. But then it turned into so much inflammation over time mm -hmm. that I would choke. Well, and after the session, you noticed immediately that things were improving. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I've never choked on food again, never vomited up food. I don't, but the bigger thing, not even that, I think I could handle that now, is that I wasn't fearful of eating and mm -hmm. choking. Mm -hmm. So that was like the bigger part. And my kids have never looked at me like, Mom, is it happening? Right. They'd always watch me during dinner. That must like, have been really hard for your husband happening. and your children. Yeah. Wow. So then they're, they're little kids, you yeah. know, to have to watch mom like, what do we do if she chokes? That's yeah. not something you want your kids to worry about. So. And you had been through how many surgeries to deal with the trauma to your jaw? So I don't even know because I they did root canals to try to save the teeth ultimately extracted the teeth and then you wait what nine months for the bone to kind of heal mm -hmm. and then put in the implants so at least six or more surgeries and i know the concern was that you might have to have more so mm -hmm. one of the goals that we had was to build up your immune system and strengthen your ability to heal mm -hmm. which of course if you're in a fight or flight panic uh, your body can't really do very well because mm -hmm. its its resources are diverted somewhere else. How soon after the session uh, did the pain start to diminish? I mean, I don't feel like, I feel like everything right after the session. Fantastic. Like immediate, I just didn't. And of course there's moments more so because of my night guard. Sometimes I'll have like a little tenderness because my night guard didn't go in correctly, but there's nothing I can eat with that tooth. I'm not worried that the tooth is failing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a daily pain or a weekly pain or any kind of consistency. It's purely due to something that I put in my mouth wrong, mm -hmm. you know? Everything just kind of vanished away as far as, and I think a big part of it is not focusing in on the fear of this pain coming back. So you're almost telling your brain, right. when's it coming? You're right. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Right. So it's just, I think that's the big part of retraining my brain to know everything's, everything is okay, everything is healed. So after our session, I always make a customized audio tape mm -hmm. and you listen to that each mm -hmm. night. How was that experience for you? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a great excuse to tell my husband, 
I need my 15 minutes of Tara. <laughs> so, um, it was just so peaceful. Like, and even if I didn't have your guided meditation, yeah. just everyone should meditate. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's, we should all take that time for ourselves to meditate. Absolutely. But that specifically in that time in my life, it just ingrains your brain to, to think correctly and to realize like my body is healed that God's given me this body that can heal itself. And now I have to believe it and know that this is real. And just having that repetitive every day, sometimes twice a day mm -hmm. if I wanted it. Um, it just was so good for the soul. And still like whenever I'm feeling like slightly anxious, I'll go back to it a year later. And it's Aww. like, ah, I love your, that. your sweet, tender voice Aww. is just immediate relaxation. I love that. That's so wonderful. <laughs> So, um, what would you say to somebody else who may be struggling with something and they're, they just don't know it's, it's uncharted territory. They might be frightened. What would you say to them? I think there's an underlying cause to all of our ailments, whether it's physical, psychological, whatever it is. And just finding the root cause to to your trauma to your pain to your chronic disease whatever it is it's not just it's not just that god gave you this disease like there there's something causing it and finding like those people dr tara like just your people that can help you find the root causes because your body can heal itself. Mm. We don't need medications. We don't need all of this stuff and input to heal us. We can heal ourselves and just, just taking the leap of faith and knowing you deserve help too. Cause I think, especially like for myself and like as a mom and having kids, we, we give our kids all this, attention and time and don't take it for ourselves but if mom ain't happy no one's happy <laughs> so take care of yourself and your whole family will feel healed too just through yourself so just always take that leap of faith for yourself to fight for your own health because we all deserve that yeah and that's not to say that you didn't utilize standard medicine when mm -hmm. you needed it obviously you had been mm -hmm. attacked and you needed your jaw right. medically dealt with and you did that and mm -hmm. anything else that was appropriate for yeah. you but if your nervous system is on fight or flight all the time it's really difficult to cultivate those resources right. and channel those resources to healing right oh completely well um i really appreciate you taking the time because um you're a busy mom and you've got kids and a household and a husband and um, I just admire all the stuff you do all day, every day, and um, appreciate you sharing your message. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Not a bit. <laughs> Not a bit. She's the best. <laughs> She's you. the best. You're amazing. Thank you so much. And if you like the interview, if you got value from it, please uh, click the subscribe button, uh, click the like button, and we'll see you on the next interview. <laughs>